yes, here comes the sun. Everybody knows that song. Makes them smile, didn't it? It was written by George Harrison of the Beatles. And when he wrote it, he said it made him smile. So it's lovely. The next bit goes like this. <laughs> Later on, we're going to have a song called Keep on the Sunny Side. But that was the first sunny song we've had today. Did you notice when I was playing that? It was very difficult because I had a cat on my lap. La, 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 la. If you're very quiet, you can hear the cat purring. Mm, no, you can't, because look. It's not a real cat. It's a replica. That means it's made to look just like something else. But it's not a lie. Now, this cat is a replica of a cat called Mrs Chippy, who was very famous. Mrs Chippy went on an expedition to the South Pole, the Antarctica, on a ship called the Endurance, right, with a man called Ernest Shackleton. That was a hundred years ago. He was a famous explorer, right? Anyhow, it didn't all end nicely, that particular voyage. But anyhow, let me tell you why this cat is called Mrs. Chippy. On board a ship, a carpenter is called a chippy. Okay, not a carpenter, a chippy. So if the captain said to you, go and get me something from the chippy, he didn't mean a bag of chips and pork scratchings and a bottle of iron brew. He meant get something from the carpenter or the chippy. And so the carpenter had a cat and this was the cat, Mrs Chippy. Mrs Chippy was a tabby cat and there are pictures of her sitting on top of the chippy's shoulders. Right. Unfortunately, when the ship got down to the southern part of the world, that's the bit you can see when you watch the David Attenborough programme. You know where it shows the world? And it's all blue up here and down the bottom it's all white. And it's all white. Well, it's not all white, actually. It's not all white today because it's very cold. It's all white because it is ice and snow. And the further you get down to Antarctica, the colder it gets. I believe it's cold enough for two pair of boot laces. That's a joke. I believe it's cold enough for a walking stick. But they're just silly jokes. Anyhow, all went well at first, and then it got colder and colder, and the ice surrounded the ship, and it started to crush the hull. Now, it was a sailing ship. It had masts and an engine, and the hull was made of steel, so it was very, very strong. It was designed so it could go through the ice, but even though it was strong, it wasn't as strong enough as the ice. And gradually, the ice crushed the ship like an eggshell. <laughs> it crushed the ship like an eggshell. The ice crushed the ship like an eggshell. The ice crushed the ship like an eggshell. Hang on. The ice crushed the ship like an eggshell. Oh, thank you very much. Don't talk with your mouth full. There we are. Now, they couldn't get out and they wanted to come home. So do you know what they did? They took the lifeboats off the ship and they put pieces of wood underneath like skis and they pulled them across the ice to try and find rescue. And do you know what? It took them two years to get back to England. It's quite an exciting story. Anyhow, she is famous and they've even had a postage stamp with Mrs Chips on it from New Zealand. Yeah. And when Henry McLeish died, on his gravestone, 
there is a bronze statue of Mrs Chi. That's nice, isn't it? I think I'll try and cheer us up with a joke. I'll make them up myself, you know. <laughs> You'll like this one. You'll like this joke. This is a good joke. I need him to help me. Oh, thanks, Rod. <laughs> Here we go. Don't go away. Don't go away. Listen, listen. Are you listening? Right. What's this? What's this? <laughs> it's a crock and spill. <laughs> Not only that, but you've got two jokes in one. Not only is it a crock and spill, but listen. What's that tune? Crocodile shoes, crocodile shoes. <laughs> That's two jokes in one. I thought I'd. Oh yeah. I thought maybe I could introduce you to some of my friends too. You've already met Ratty. Hello. And you've met Crocodile, haven't you, Crocodile? He's not a real crocodile. I am. He's not a real crocodile. I am. He's not a real crocodile. He's an oven glow. And you're not a real pirate. Um, he actually, actually, he is a real crocodile. <laughs> right. We're going to have a story about a cat today. And it's called Six Dinner Sid. It's the moment for the big joke. Yep. Big joke. Now, do you remember... The pie rat joke, that was pretty good. Even though I say it myself, the pie rat joke. No, I had a pie and there was a rat in it, you know, and I pretended I baked it. I hadn't really. And then I, I held it up and I said, what's this? It, it, it's a pie rat, you know, like pie rat. <laughs> Everybody liked it. Anyhow, here's the joke. Are you ready for it? Are you ready? What do you call this? What do you call this? It's a... <clears throat> hang on, hang on. Ting! It's a pie mole. <laughs> it's a pie mole. <laughs> Isn't that great? Is that great? No. Is, it, is that funny? Why not? The other one was funny. Yeah, but that was um, that was a pie rat. And you can't say pie mole. Well, why not? Because it's just not funny. Ah. So, after I've gone all the trouble to cook a pie crust and put a mole in it, and it's not funny. All right. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> Shall we have a story? I think it's time to have a story. This is a story about a cat. We've had a story about a real cat. But this is a story about a pretend cat. He's called Six Dinner Sid. And you'll find out why he's called Six Dinner Sid by the end of the story. There he is. He's not a tabby cat like Miss, Mrs. Chips, is he? He's a black one. Sid lived at number one Aristotle Street. He also lived at number two, number three, number four, number five and number six. How on earth does he do that? Sid lived in six houses. So he could have six dinners. Each night he would slip out of number one where he might have had chicken into number two or fish. Mince at number four. 
fish again at number five. Rounding off at number six with beef and kidney stew. He looks quite fat, doesn't he? <clears throat> Since no one talked to their neighbours in Aristotle Street, no one knew what Sid was up to. They each believed the cat they fed was theirs, and theirs alone. But Sid had to work hard for his dinners. It wasn't easy being six people's pet. He had six different names to remember, and six different ways to behave. When he was being Saramouche, Sid put on swanky airs. As Bob, he had a job. And silly as Sally. As Sooty, he snooched, but as Swart, she had to act rough and tough. Chasing a dog. It's usually the other way round, isn't it? All this work sometimes wore Sid out. But he didn't care as long as he had his six dinners. And besides, he liked being scratched in six different places. And sleeping in six different beds. In fact, life in Aristotle Street was just about perfect for Sid until... One cold, damp day... He caught a nasty cough. <laughs> the next thing he knew, he was being taken to see the vet. Poor Sid. He was taken not once, not twice, but six times. He went with six different people in six different ways. The vet said Sid's cough wasn't nearly as nasty as it sounded, but to be on the safe side, he should have a spoonful of medicine. Of course, Sid didn't just have one spoonful of medicine, he had six! <laughs> that serves him right, six dinners, six spoons of medicine. Now, one black cat does look much the same like another but nobody, not even a busy vet, could see the same cat six times without becoming suspicious. Sure enough, when he checked his appointment book, he found six cats with a cough, all living in Aristotle Street. So he rang the owners at once, and oh dear, Sid was found out. When they discovered what he'd been up to, Sid's owners were furious. They said he'd no business eating so many dinners. They said in future they would make sure he had only one dinner a day. But Sid was a six dinner a day cat. So he went to live at number one Pythagoras Place. He also went to live at numbers two, three, four, five and six. Oh, good me. Unlike Aristotle Street, the people who lived in Pythagoras Place talked to their neighbours. So right from the start, everyone knew about Sid's six dinners. And because everyone knew, nobody minded. It looks as if he was going to have his six dinners after all. He looks very pleased with himself, doesn't he? That's a great story. That's a great story. Now, I promise you that we were going to have a song. I need a drink first. Oh, I could drink a galleon of this. I could drink a galleon of this. You get it? I made that up. Okay. Oh. Let's have a song to finish. It's called Keep on the Sunny Side. My mum always said to me, keep on the sunny side of the street. 
And my dad always used to walk on the sunny side of the street. In fact, when he was out in town, he would cross over the road so he was on the sunny side. <laughs> Unless you can be a pirate, then always be a pirate. <laughs>